Hey friends! Since Halloween's right around the corner, I thought today we would make something everyone's gonna need, especially if you're gonna go out and collect some of that beautiful candy sweetness. Instead of using that old pillowcase or a random Walmart bag, let's make ourselves a trick-or-treat bag. It's easy and cheap and essential for the trick-or-treaters in your life, whether it's you or some little ones you know. It shouldn't take more than an hour or two, and if you have a sewing machine, it'll take you even less time. Now let's get to it! There are a lot of sewing tutorials out there, but this one's going to be a little bit different in a couple of different ways. First of all, I don't have a sewing machine, so this is going to be a tutorial on how to sew the old school way. Anyone can do what I'm about to show you. All you really need is a needle, some thread, and some fabric to sew. Other tools definitely make it easier, but if you can only get your hands on those three things, you should be able to make this trick or treat bag, or really anything. Now, crafting like this always takes patience and time, and it can be very meditative. We are gonna be taking advantage of that and using this tutorial as an introduction to mindfulness meditation as well as an introduction to sewing. So come along and I'll teach you a couple things and maybe we'll learn something together. So the first step in any mindful meditation is to find your breath. Now, I hear that a lot in meditation, but all it really means is to become aware of what your breath is doing. Right? It doesn't mean to change how you're breathing, just as you breathe in, you notice it. Feel your lungs inflate, even if it doesn't feel great. That's all right. Just notice, don't think too much about it. Now, close your eyes and take three deep breaths in and out. So step number two is to prepare your materials. This is what I'm going to be using, but I encourage you to experiment with different tools as you sew more and more. I found this orange bedsheet at Goodwill and I have this green fabric left over from another project. Toss a little black fabric in there for some jack-o'-lantern spookiness and that should be all we need for fabric. We also need some chalk for outlining things, a measuring device, I love this flexible tape measure, but a ruler would work too. A longish straight edge, but a ruler works too. Pins, because these things are going to make your life so much easier. Thread. I use strong upholstery thread because sometimes regular thread likes to break, but you can totally use whatever you like. And for this project, I have my trusty needles. Step the third. It's time to cut out our fabric. Before we do though, let's get our measurements drawn on there. We're going to be cutting two pieces out of each fabric for the two walls of the bag. Measure out a rectangle 14 inches by 16 inches. Now you can alter this if you want your bag a little bigger or smaller than this one. If you're going to want to use this as a super cool reusable grocery bag later on you might want it a little bit bigger, but this should work just fine. So I can tell that this bag and I both really like pumpkins, so we're going to be modeling it after one. The outside of the bag is orange, of course, which means that the green fabric gets to be the liner and also the handles for the bag. So once you've cut out the four rectangles you're going to need, measure out two more rectangles, 25 inches by 6 inches. The handles can be whatever fabric appeals to you, and you can make them longer or shorter for your needs, but 6 inches is a good width because we're going to be folding the fabric into handle shapes, and the thicker the handle, the stronger it will be. To the fourth step! It's time to pin it all up. So, the trick to making invisible-ish seams is to start with the parts you want to face out at the end, facing each other right now. So, I take my orange fabric and put the outside face on the other outside face. Now pin up three of the sides, leaving one of the smaller sides open for later.
Much like history, this process is repeated on the green fabric. For the handles, we're going to fold it in quarters widthwise, so basically do what I'm doing here. Once you have all those folded up nicely, go ahead and pin that up along the open edge so it doesn't get all floopy and unfold on you. Okay, so step uh, five? Before we go on, let's take a second and take our three deep breaths. Close your eyes, let the air flow in and out. Focus all your attention on your breath, and if it wanders, just calmly bring it back. When you're finished with your three breaths, ask yourself, what am I doing right now? And how do I feel right now? Before you move on to the next step of the project, try to answer these questions honestly and without judgment or any negativity. Just record how you feel to yourself and know that it's okay. This is the essence of mindfulness. Alrighty, so at this point, we have to agree, you have to promise to be extra careful while using the tools we're gonna to use for sewing. If you've never handled needles before, they are very, very sharp and can easily draw blood if you uh, aren't careful with them. Uh, maybe ask some advice of a parent or guardian or a knowledgeable friend person. They might be able to give you some pointers. You're probably going to get pricked once or twice while using these, but if you take the proper precautions, you'll be able to avoid getting stabbed uh, a little more intensely. But don't worry, you're going to be fine. Now let's get to it. Now that we've pinned our fabrics together and have centered ourselves with our mindful breathing and questions, let's put pen to paper, needle to fabric, fork to plate, and get started. Pull a length of string about the span of your arms off of the spool. Any longer than that, and it's super hard to keep it from getting into shenanigans. Threading the needle is fairly difficult, but once you get it, pull it through until you have two equal lengths with the needle in the middle. I always smooth out the string to help avoid tangling later. Uh, tie a double knot in the end. This is what's going to stop the thread from going through the fabric, so make sure the two knots make one big knot if you can. Take your needle and insert it into the fabric as close to the top of the rectangle as possible. And away we go. You are officially sewing. Woo! Keep going back and forth with the needle and try not to go over the seam to the other side as that will make things a little wonky at the end. Go down one side, along the bottom, and up the other side. When you get about two inches of thread left on your needle, run the needle back underneath the last stitch that you made and put the needle through the loop that this creates. Then tie a double knot in the end of the thread to keep it nice and firm. You don't want that thread coming undone and having a hole open up so all your candy falls out. To reload your needle, just repeat the whole arm's length of thread part and double knot the end and then feed it through the knot you made along the seam of the fabric. Then, part the two strands of the new string and run the needle through them. Pull that tight and you should have a new knot to continue sewing. Keep at that until you have sewn the outer fabric together and the inner fabric as well. For the straps, just run a line of stitching up the open side of the fabric where you pinned before. It'll probably be stronger if you stitch the other side as well, but you don't have to. Throughout this sewing process, try to be aware of your breath as often as possible. Try sewing in a quiet place with as few distractions as you can. The repetition of hand sewing is one of the most meditative processes there is, and it's a great way to get the mind wandering so that you can keep bringing it back to your breath. 
When you're finished sewing the inner, outer, and handle fabrics together, go ahead and close your eyes and take our three deep breaths again and ask, what am I doing? And how do I feel right now? And try to answer those honestly. Whenever you're ready, we're going to clip the bottom two corners of the inner and outer fabrics. Just be sure you don't clip the stitching, cause that's bad news bears. Then turn the outer fabric inside out so that the outside faces of the fabric face out. Next, slip the outer fabric into the inner fabric and line up the edges and the seams. Make sure that the outside face of the outer fabric and the outside face of the inner fabric are touching. We're basically repeating the same process we used in step four. Pin the corners together so it all stays in place. Now here's where the straps come into play. Take one of the straps and make a handle loop out of it. Now insert the strap loop top down in between the inner and outer fabrics and leave about two inches sticking out. I space these about two inches away from each of the corners. Pin the dickens out of the straps, as well as the rest of the circumference of the top of the bag. Now, back to sewing! Hooray! When you're about three or four inches away from the corner, tie off your thread and take out the final pins. It's time for the big squeeze. So take all the fabric and fold it through that hole you left in the top. It might be a little bit of a challenge, but that's why I always use the stronger thread so that it doesn't randomly break when I'm shoving all that fabric through there. When that's complete, push the inner fabric in on itself so that it sits inside the outer fabric and it looks like a bag. Now to close up that hole we left. These stitches will be visible, so I recommend getting a hold of a thread that is similar in color to your outer fabric. We're going to be doing the same thing as with the other stitching, uh, but it helps in this case if we make these stitches small and close together so that they are more inconspicuous. Now, the straps are almost always going to be the weakest link in the whole system of this bag, so it's always a good idea to go back and do some extra stitching to reinforce it. Get a lovely little X pattern going on, and it's going to be great. Whatever step it is, celebrate! Woo! You have finished your trick-or-treat bag. Now, go out and get some delicious candy from all your neighbors out there, but remember to be careful. Make one of these for a cousin or a sibling or a self. Or maybe make a few of them and roll them out as your brand new fleet of grocery bags. A lot of places offer discounts for bringing your own bags, so really this could be a good way to save you some money in the future. And on top of that, the best thing about this is you get to completely customize this to your standards. That's what's so great about sewing. 
you get to do exactly whatever you want to do. Find a cool fabric, make a cool pattern, outline, make a bag big enough to carry rocks for balancing. But make sure to reinforce the handles if you do that. And on a serious note, please keep in mind that every bag has its weight limit. They're only going to hold so much and they can break if you put too much in them, as with any grocery bag. So just be mindful of how much you put in there, like you would with anything else. And not only have you made a killer bag, but you've successfully incorporated mindfulness into your life. The hardest part of meditating is always getting started with it. So kudos for taking your first steps. Keep it up and before you know it, you're gonna be a pro. But that's all for me today, friends. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already and uh, stay tuned uh, because in the next week or two, we're gonna be having a lot more mindful projects. Together, we will find our balance, our mindfulness, and our creativity. Until then, thank you a thousand times for watching and I wish you all a beautiful week and a happy Halloween. Happy crafting, everybody.